Apple TV's prehistoric planet is absolutely breathtaking. Its documentary-style, planet Earth-like depiction of dinosaurs and their habitats is simply the best that I have ever seen. This documentary masterfully skirts the line between showcasing how similar dinosaurs were to contemporary animals and how strikingly bizarre and fascinating they were as well. The show takes the most modern science available and recreates dinosaurs so convincingly that you'd think they were still around if you didn't know any better. At the end of each episode, Sir David Attenborough explains that the science behind each particularly strange dinosaur behavior can be found on the show's show page on Apple TV. These short clips cite fossil evidence as proof of strange behaviors, like T-Rex pool parties. However, this show also uses a fair bit of speculative paleontology to reconstruct their dinosaurs. Speculative paleontology refers to reconstructions of dinosaurs based on animals that were alive today and those of related dinosaurs. In other words, speculative reconstructions might be accurate or they might not, since there's no fossil evidence to show for them. For fun, let's discuss what was speculative in Prehistoric Planet, episode by episode. We've linked the science behind our video in the description. Before we begin the analysis, I would like to say that I loved watching Prehistoric Planet, and nothing I say in this video makes me enjoy the series any less. It goes without saying that this video contains heavy spoilers, so be warned. If you want to talk with others about this video, chat with other dino nerds, post your art, play on the Minecraft server, or get sneak peeks at future uploads, join the Discord linked in the description. Only for my fellow paleo enjoyers, who are 13 plus years old as per the Discord terms of service. Episode 1, Coasts. There's a fair bit of speculative material in this episode, but nothing too crazy. In the episode, a Mosasaurus allows fish to clean its body. Would Mosasaurus allow such behavior? Though there isn't fossil evidence for this, I think it's pretty much guaranteed. There are examples of this for large carnivores and herbivores in and out of the water. Crocodiles allow birds to pick meat out of their mouths, and small birds eat ticks off savanna megafauna. This behavior is known as a mutualistic symbiotic relationship, where both the assisting and receiving species benefit from the interaction. In the case of Mosasaurus, the fish enjoy the Mosasaurus's molting skin, and the Mosasaurus is assisted in shedding. This one isn't too polarizing. However, would ammonites be able to hold breeding light shows? In the show, hundreds of ammonites get together to form a huge, fantastic display of blue light. Bioluminescence, or the ability of an animal to produce light via chemical reactions in its skin, is common among cephalopods. Bioluminescence is most prevalent among deep-sea dwelling animals and in the depths of the ocean, where any light at all is useful for mating and prey attraction. If ammonites were coastal animals, would they even need bioluminescence in their shallow habitats? In my opinion, it's not really a necessary adaptation, except maybe to confuse potential predators. Though this one is not proven, I really hope that they were bright little dudes in the ocean. Now on to episode 2, Deserts. This episode depicts some extremely interesting behaviors that I believe deserve some attention. It displays male dreadnoughtus inflating rows of air sacs on their necks as part of a mating display and fighting other bulls to dominate the herd. These air sacs are a fascinating dive into speculative paleontology. For example, we know that sauropods had air sacs in their necks based on indentations found in their neck vertebrae. We also know that some species of birds, like the greater sage grouse, tend to inflate their air sacs as part of mating rituals. Based on this information, I believe the idea of dreadnoughtus, or perhaps most sauropods with air sacs having a row of inflatable balloons on their necks, is not too far-fetched at all. The other behavior exhibited in this episode that cannot be proven by the fossil record is a herd of hadrosaurs using the stars in the night sky to navigate to familiar feeding grounds. This was another example of the documentary depicting behaviors that I had no idea even existed in contemporary animals. When I watched this, I'll admit that I was skeptical. However, several animals today, ranging in their simplicity, navigate using the night sky. Sure enough, dung beetles, indigo buntings, and harbor seals use the stars to get from point A to point B, especially in long migrations. This makes this fascinating behavior very believable for desert-faring animals, such as our hadrosaur Cicernosaurus friends. Now onto the freshwater episode, episode 3. This one had fewer outlandish speculative behaviors and depictions of dinosaurs. This episode showcases several dinosaurs, but by far the strangest was the Dinochirus. This huge duck dinosaur had immense claws to forage for plants and a wide bill to scoop them up. In the episode, the animal is notably depicted to have a thick willow-like coat of feathers, giving the animal a very distinct look. As modern science progresses, more and more artists are incorporating feathers into their restorations. However, these restorations are often exaggerated. So too might be prehistoric planet's Dinochirus restoration. The dinosaur is depicted to have emu-like feathers, which have long central shafts with veins branching off. We know that Dinochirus likely had feathers due to their relatives, Ornithomimids, possessing a coat of downy feathers that covered the majority of their body. Down feathers have no central shaft or predictable structure, being close to the body and very soft. That pushes prehistoric planet's depiction of a Dinochirus with emu-like feathers further into the realm of speculation, since it might be more likely inferred that they had down feathers instead. This is really getting to the weeds though. I really like their depiction of Dinochirus, and I'm glad such an interesting animal is getting the spotlight. 
Moving forward with episode 4, Ice Worlds, our speculative depiction of a dinosaur is in Pachyrhinosaurus. Prehistoric Planet's reconstruction of the Ceratopsian shows the animal's back laden in a light covering of quills, which are long, pointy, feather-like structures that have no veins, the structures that make feathers softer and give them lift-producing properties. This depiction is speculative since the only quills ever to be found on another dinosaur were on Psittacosaurus, a small Ceratopsian. Fossils of this dinosaur show that the animal had a line of long quills running down its tail. Paleoartists took this and ran with it, often showing all Ceratopsians with quills. As of now, there is no evidence that other Ceratopsians had quills, just a scientific hunch. Other Ceratopsians follow separate evolutionary lineages, so we cannot be certain that they had quills. The episode had another extremely interesting display of speculative dinosaur behavior, possibly my favorite in the entire show. A Truodon is seen dashing between trees and jumping over logs in an intense forest fire. It picks up a burning piece of vegetation and throws it into the forest, worsening the fire and causing animals to flee. It then catches what looks to be a small animal in the ensuing chaos. This behavior shows a creature capable of strategy, behavior indicative of higher brain function. Scientists have remarked for years that Trudon was likely one of the smartest dinosaurs that lived based on its eye-to-head ratio, which is associated with a larger brain and higher intelligence. This behavior has not been proven through fossils, though it may not be as far-fetched as you think. It turns out that this behavior has been observed in Australian firehawks, which pursue wildfires to catch fleeing animals and have been observed to spread the fires as well. Therefore, it is not unreasonable to depict a highly intelligent dinosaur such as Truodon spreading fires to flush out prey. This type of speculative dinosaur behavior is what I've been craving for movies like Jurassic World. Imagine an animal burning your house down to catch you running in your underwear in the street. Lastly, we have forests. In this episode, a group of Triceratops is shown traveling into a cave in order to find clay. David Attenborough explains that the clay provides a protective lining in the stomach to enable Triceratops to eat poisonous plants, a behavior especially useful when food is scarce. This is also observed in modern animals such as parrots, who will seek out clay to help aid in digesting toxins in certain plants. The clay also has useful nutrients. Triceratops would likely have exhibited this behavior as well, rather than traveling to new feeding grounds, an energy-costly endeavor. Parrots also use clay to cleanse themselves from sickness caused by acidic foods, or for breaking down stomach ulcers. A type of clay called kaolin settles in their stomachs without being dissolved, which remains to assist in disease prevention. Kaolin is also used in modern medicines to stop bleeding or to be a filter in tablets. It's not unlikely that Triceratops might have also used clay for a similar use, seeing as clay seems to be some sort of miracle for a superfood. Go ahead, kiddos, eat your clay. We don't know that Triceratops did this according to any fossil records, hence the behavior's speculative nature, but modern animals exhibiting such behavior put it in the realm of possibility. I would say that Prehistoric Planet is my favorite depiction of dinosaurs to date. The show writers, paleobiologists, and paleontologists behind the production dove deep into the behavior of modern animals to produce incredibly realistic and incredibly engaging dinosaur reconstructions. It is a love letter to paleo nerds and animal lovers alike, and in making this video, I realized how closely they followed science and research to make an incredible show. It was a breath of fresh air and what I had been craving, a depiction of dinosaurs that used reality to show how incredible these animals really were. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.